Alright guys, welcome back to the CarCast. This is my personal podcast where I rant and rave about my evil betrayer, uh, ex-prostitute, um, whore of a soon-to-be ex-wife. I, dux- I discuss toxic narcissism, um, strategies for how to deal with such individuals, and strategies for how to co-parent with one if you are forced to be in that situation. So, uh, today's uh, topic is going to be writing the narrative of your life. So, um, you're the only person who's lived your life. And, uh, you've lived through a long time period, you know, uh, you're not allowed to watch my videos unless you're an adult. I have them all set to adult, so, uh, so if you're watching, you're at least an adult. Um, and when we think about our lives, it's impossible to think about the entirety of it all, right? Um, you can't think about everything all at once. So to simplify things, you tell yourself a narrative. And that narrative, uh, probably went something along the lines of, uh, I was single, I was unhappy, then I met this person who, uh, who their presence in my life did something for me, um, it changed me, uh, and you were probably thinking that it changed you for the better, um, at times, you know, um, might have been thinking that this is the love of your life or your forever partner. So, uh, you probably were using romantic, uh, terms to describe it, you know? Um, and then I met the love of my life and, and, uh, my life was so much better and I finally had a purpose. I was finally needed. I finally had a reason to take on responsibility, uh, and to be a better person. Um, and part of that narrative is actually true. Um, that is part of what you were getting out of a relationship with a narcissist. You were getting a sense of being needed. A sense of, you know, this person needed you to regulate their emotions. They couldn't handle life without you. They can't handle life without their victims, guys. Uh, without someone there to... Uh, be responsible for all of the negative things they might ever feel, to project that responsibility onto, you know, they need other people to take responsibility for their emotional state. This is what all narcissists need, Um, and you were needed. They needed you as much as they need food and water. narcissist being around others is a need. Um, and if you had kids with a narcissist, of course, your kid does need you, you know. And it's appropriate for a child to need their parent. Um, it's just the state of being a child. Um, you need people to look out for you, to put your interests above their own. And in that sense, um, when you end a relationship with a narcissist in which there's children, um, it's not a total loss, right? Um, So when you end a relationship with a narcissist, there's no children involved. It's more or less a total loss. You lost all that time, all that energy, um, and you lose the sense of being needed by other people in your life. All of a sudden, you're completely alone. You don't have a reason to strive. the responsibility of being responsible for the narcissist is gone. 
and this can feel weirdly like a loss even though it is a win <laughs> to not be responsible for another adult's um, emotions for the emotional state of an adult who should be perfectly capable of regulating their own emotions who should be a big boy or a big girl who can be responsible for their own happiness um, they made you responsible for their happiness it's appropriate to be responsible for your kid's happiness and so in a way you don't lose as much when there's a kid involved you don't on a personal level you're still needed that's my point um you're needed you have a reason to hold your shit together <laughs> um you have a very good reason and that's your child or children um they need to learn from you they need to learn from your example um how to navigate um, through a process like this um, with dignity and while maintaining your center and while being, you know, uh, a person with self-respect and integrity. Um, it's easier to go off the rails if you don't have a kid, right? Um, and it, it may feel like you want to go off the rails sometimes. Uh, Shortly after my separation, I put on my backpack. I just started walking. My car was in the shop. I just started walking. I think I walked like 23 miles um, until I got to a gas station. I just couldn't walk anymore. I called a friend to come pick me up. Uh, yeah. It can feel... Um, can feel like that's the route you want to go sometimes. Uh, just leave it all behind. But you have a reason not to do that. More of a reason not to do that. Um, and it's less of a total loss, right? You still... You're needed by a person who actually needs you, who can't be expected to be a big girl or big boy because they're a child. wants to put you in that parental role. Um, and then you get a sense of responsibility out of that. that. That's something you get, a sense of purpose and responsibility. Um, so if there's a kid involved, you get to keep a lot of that sense of purpose and responsibility. Um, it's going to continue to be a positive thing in your life, guys. It's positive when you take on responsibility. Uh, it's a positive thing to have responsibility, actually, um, because, like I said, um, it's not you're not just doing this for yourself. You're doing this for your kid too. Um, you're not just being strong for you. You're being strong for other people, um, and that's why you got to stay strong. writing the narrative of your life and that can be part of that narrative um, if you have kids with a narcissist um, and I stayed strong and I did what I had to do for the good of my kid um, for the good of this innocent person who uh, even more than me is blameless in this You and your child are both victims of this abuser, um, this trashy person who decided to drop a nuclear bomb on your family. You know, um, there's some things that are unforgivable, and if they have done unforgivable things, things that maybe you told them in advance, if you cheat on me, it's over forever. Or uh, maybe it happened more than once, and you forgave, and they just kept doing it again. A, a time came when you gave them an ultimatum. If this happens one more time, we're done. Um, if you keep treating me in this way, there's a point at which I'm going to be done. Um, and we're quickly approaching that point. You know? uh, and then they did cross that line. And then you were done. there about you enforcing your boundaries um, and you can make that
that narrative stronger by continuing to enforce your boundaries by maintaining those strong boundaries um, it's going to get easier the longer you stay away but you're still going to sometimes be tempted to to write in that text write in that email to uh, to respond with that message that um, that gives them fuel that gives them that emotional fuel that they're looking for they'll do stuff just to piss you off <clears throat> they'll do stuff just to piss you off because they would like the narrative to be um, I left this person because they uh, have all these issues you know they'll turn it around um, just to feel better about themselves they'll say uh, when they were incredibly abusive towards you they'll make it about you somehow being an abuser um They'll make it about you uh, being a cheater, even if you never cheated. Um, they'll come up with a reason why they think you, you've been cheating to justify uh, what they're doing. Because, you know, and, but most of all, they just try not to think about it. You know, they, they, they'd rather not think about it. They don't often think about the way that they've treated other people or is it justified or not. Of course it's justified in their eyes. Um, it's their brain disorder that makes them able to justify it. Um, and they don't overthink it. They don't overanalyze it. Um, their narrative is, whatever, are you crazy? You crazy. Um, you're too sensitive. Um, you can't move on, right? In order to make this their narrative, they need you being emotional. Um, they need you reacting to their abuse. Um, they need you flying off the handle. You gotta stay calm, cool, and collected, guys. That's the narrative. The narrative is um, I stayed calm, cool, collected, strategic. I did what I had to do. And I ended up with custody of my kid. The courts are still very biased against fathers when it comes to custody. Um, and I've heard a lot of different stories that range from way worse than my story to, uh, to you know, not quite so bad, of course. But, and egregious circumstances, they will manufacture uh, domestic violence claims, um, they will accuse you of being a drug addict, an alcoholic, of being unsafe to be around um, your own child. They will make false allegations, they'll just fabricate false allegations that they know aren't true.
very likely is one of them somehow escaping an abuser by jumping uh, into bed with another person while married. <laughs> by trying to take as much of your stuff, as much as of your money um, as they can. By trying to contribute as little as they can towards their kids' uh, material um, situation, even if they used to um, contribute, uh, you know, a large amount toward, you know, my lifestyle with my son's taken a hit, and it's been hard, and there can be different narratives about that, right? One is, woe is me, I'm a poor victim. who are 
are capable of maliciously harming others to the extent that narcissists are. Um, they're not good people who just make mistakes. They're malicious people. They're sadists. They're people who enjoy harming others, who get a real sense of pleasure and satisfaction out of causing harm to, uh, to people. It's probably a dynamic they learned from their parents. Um, and which one parent was kind of always harming and being malicious, acting maliciously towards the other. Um, sometimes it's that, sometimes it's through a, a different family member, you know. But they've, they've seen this model somewhere, they've learned it. Um, they would love it if you, if you were able to make the narrative into, uh, you know, they want your narrative to conform to theirs. They want, even if it's not true, they want you just to smooth things over, just to make things psychologically easier for them. They want you to say some platitudes like that, like, oh, well, you're a good person, we just grew apart. No, <laughs> that's not what happened there. No, it's a little more complicated than we're good people who grew apart. Um, but they want that absolution. They want you to say it's okay. If it's not okay, don't say it's okay. You're writing your own narrative. Uh, it can be not okay what they did to you. It can never be okay. <laughs> yeah, honestly, uh, if that's your truth, uh, it can never ever be okay. Uh, you're under no obligation to ever forgive this person. Uh, you're under no obligation to wish them the best. Um, I wish for nothing but bad things to happen to uh, to her and to her uh, to her new victim as well. Her new victim who who became her next victim, knowingly uh, knowingly destroying my family as he did it. Yeah, you're allowed to wish them nothing but bad things. And then when bad things happen, uh, you're allowed for your narrative to be uh, that it happened because they fucking deserved it. <laughs> that narrative will write itself, guys. Their lives aren't going to be perfect now. They're, uh, they're not going to change for this next person. Don't worry about that, really. These aren't people who are capable of self-reflection and change. They didn't change for you. They're not going to suddenly change for this next person. They're not going to suddenly give this next person all those things they promised to give you that they're now promising to give to the next person. They're not emotionally capable. That's their actual life narrative. That they create all these other narratives to... Uh, to try to downplay and uh, dismiss, pretend like it isn't real. <clears throat> They're trying to fake it till they make it. They're trying to fake their way into having normal human emotions, normal human relationships. Uh, after enough times around the ring, they know on some level it's not possible for them, but they're gonna keep pathologically acting out this narrative This is the person who's going to solve all my problems. Uh, who's going to make me permanently happy forever. Dang it. This person didn't solve my problems. They betrayed me. They're not good enough. I hate them. And this uh, person is worthy of being treated horribly. Uh, and then, eventually, after they do some shopping around... This next person is going to be the person who's going to solve all my problems and make me happy forever. And each time they'll believe the narrative a little less. After enough times around that circular pattern, they'll start to understand, like, this is the pattern. But they still have to live in those false narratives. Uh, because that's how they draw people in. 
and they, they need other people to survive. They can't stand on their own two feet. Um, they're like parasites. They're always going to have the same sad victim narrative. And that's their karma. That's their punishment. Um, here's the difference. You believed in your narrative, and that's why it's harder for you now than it is for them. Because you actually believed the narrative. This wasn't just a performance for you. This wasn't just a, an opera, an MO. <laughs> this wasn't just a pathological thing you've done dozens of times. You believed. Uh, you believed that this person was was going to be your person, and you saw this person's flaws, but you dared to love them anyway. Uh, in part, that's that's what you're being punished for. That's partly what they're punishing you for. They hate you for being what they're incapable of being, for having what they're incapable of having. And they won't be happy until they drag you down to their level. Um, you can choose a narrative where you're a strong person, you encountered a weak person, you tried to help this weak person, they were too weak to be helped. And you might even hope that they get help in the future, you know? A lot of us, I think, there's a dream that a narcissist is going to go to therapy and learn that what they did was unacceptable and genuinely feel remorse and atone. They're going to genuinely change and be a good person. It would be psychologically comforting to believe that for the well-being of your child, you know. It would be great for my son if his mom changed. Uh, if his mom became a better person. If his mom was all of a sudden capable of treating a partner with decency and respect. Um, and taking responsibility for her own emotions, not making them responsible. <clears throat> not having to lash out if she's having a bad day not having to harm others because she's having a bad day. <clears throat> that would be ideal. Then she probably wouldn't victimize my son as much as she has already and probably will going into the future. Um, but they don't. They don't because they're stuck in their narrative. Don't get stuck in your narrative. Don't build the same kind of narrative as them. You're a strong person, you encountered a weak person. They were too weak to be saved. So eventually you had to move on because you need to carry the people who are capable of saving, you know, who you're capable of carrying. You have people who do need carrying, like your child. Um, and thank God your child has you in their life. Uh, able to be present, able to actually prioritize them, put them first. Um, because you got to do that even more now. You didn't realize that you're probably doing most of it already, but you know, it's really important that you stay strong to be able to carry your children. But yeah, it, 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 there came to a point you had to make a choice. Uh, either, either this spouse this partner was going to bring your boat down along with you and your kid in it. Or you had to throw them out, out of the boat you know, to sink or swim on their own. That's the point it came to. You know, you couldn't carry this selfish user anymore. You had to paddle your boat you know, sail, sailing on down the line by yourself with your child in it. You know, he only had so much food and so much water. <laughs> Maybe lifeboat's a bad uh, analogy. They're just going to have to build their own raft now. There's plenty of wreckage and stuff. Floating wood. They're just going to have to build their own. And they'll probably latch onto someone else's boat real fast. Heck, they might have been sabotaging your boat with the, with the plan to 
swim over to this other boat they have lined up in secret. As soon as you were both sunk, but you didn't let them. You're still in your boat. Alright, that's enough of the boat analogies. Uh, just be careful about the narrative you write. Because you're in total control now. You're in charge now. Uh, you are the one with the ability, the power of the pen, to write your own narrative. Narrative about you being strong, about you being wiser, about you being a better, uh, wiser hunter now. Um, don't go for the wounded gazelle. Stop doing that. Stop going for people who need to be fixed. You know, what should be attractive to you is someone with their shit together. Because uh, that's the type of person you deserve. Someone you can lean on who will lean on you. But who you will make each other stronger. Instead of someone who will make you weaker. Um, someone who will add to your strength instead of take from it. Uh, Alright guys, thanks for listening. Have a good one.